When we look at the type of testing that we have in these agile teams, it's very much based on, you know, exploratory testing. Maybe there's not many scripts. So how do we provide the information to people who matter about what's going on in testing and, and some idea of the risks that are happening in their organization? I think one of the big things we can start looking at is how to better visualize um, what we do. And let's not do a 50-page test summary report, right? A, you hate writing them. I know you do. And secondly, they're not exactly great reading. Let's do something simple that people can immediately and is attractive to people and people want to read. Now, look at maybe you've got a UX person in your organization. Speak to them. Tell them what, what are these are the sorts of information I want to provide in a quick and easy way and see how they can help you create some sort of visualizations to, des to describe what you do. This is a, a quality engineering model I've been working on at the moment. And it's about how do we, how can we talk about quality to people outside of the team? One of the big things about quality engineering is it's very much project specific or team specific. You know, in the, in the old days we had quality and it was very much standardized across an organization. But we can't do that anymore because if quality is truly a team's responsibility, then we have to give that team autonomy to make decisions about the quality based on some outcomes. So then how can we visualize that quality to people outside the team? And this is just something that I've been playing around with, with some of my members at testing times, to be able to look at how we can talk about quality to the CIO or to the release, um, the train, release train engineers. And so you look at, we're looking at quality in a very different way. We're not only looking at product, but we're looking at the people around that. We're looking at the practices those people do. And also we're looking at the technology. So we're incorporating many, many dis different aspects of what quality might be. And then we're looking at, well, what are the outcomes that we want to achieve? And how are we going to know when we've got there? And also, what are the tasks related to that? So we can actually visual, give that in a visual way to people outside of the organization. OK, so really, I try to encapsulate all this. And, and I'm going to finish up with this quote. Um, really, there are huge challenges out there that we know our organizations are facing. I know many of you, even in, in, Bang in Bangalore at the moment, you're going through enormous change, where the IT industry is changing significantly. And the, your job role is potentially going to change significantly. So these are huge things. How are you going to help your organization through this struggle, through this change? And it is a struggle. And that's OK. You know, what, what leaders really do is look at that and, and rather than um, and take, it, take it by the horns and look at how we can make that um, better for the future, for ourselves, our organization, and the testers and the teams alongside us. That's it. I've been asked to leave a little bit of time for questions. Um, so thank you very much. Any questions? Anyone? can raise your hand. OK, there's one here. Uh, you talked about the transition from uh, old waterfall to the newer agile and how much test managers have uh, helped to cope up with that. So uh, in a multi-vendor environment, uh, do you think who should be on the driving foot? Who should initiate these discussions to transition from um, typically 11 month the testing cycle to a daily testing outcome? Um, that's a great question. I think, um, I think testers and test managers have a huge part. Um, but what I find is that people forget that test managers exist. And so what you'll have is that you'll have de de development, people who basically own the, have the power, <laughs> let's face it, um, so develop, development, heads of engineering, they'll start making decisions about these sorts of things without necessarily talking about testing. It's not that they don't, they just don't think of it. It's like, you know. Um, and so 
somehow, you know, you've got to find a way of actually getting into those conversations. You know, even just things like, you know, I, I, you know, put forwarding ideas, start talking about possible, you know, ways that things can be done. Um, I think that um, any tester or test manager in any organization has amazing ideas and knows exactly what needs to be done. But are, the, are, are those people um, vocalizing them? Um, are, do they have the confidence to vocalize them? That's a big thing. Um, and also, are they able to do it in a, in a way that helps people understand? So it's not just about, you know, often we talk about in a communication, we have, um, it's about what you say, but it's also what the other person has to listen, right? So how can you make sure that the other person is understanding what you say? Uh, and I think that's, that's a real challenge. <laughs> so it's not just about providing the evidence, but also, um, you know, make it, helping them understand, listen, in a way. So you've got to give that information in a way that they understand. Um, great thing, uh, for example, engineers, working with engineers. You know, it's, it's give them data. <laughs> you know, perform a little experiment and show them potential risk rather than saying, oh, I think this is a risky thing. Um, you know, so just trying to get a bit into the psyche of the people that you're working at, what interests people. A lot of CIOs, it's about their own K KPIs. <laughs> I have an idea what their KPIs are and what they're working towards, so you can help them achieve their KPIs. It's starting to think a bit like that. Right, any further questions? Yep, there's one here. Okay. <coughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, I have uh, two questions for you. Uh, we have one. to choose one because another lady here and she wants to have a question too. Sure. Uh, so, uh, first one is regarding automation testing. So, uh, once the tests are automated, our job is done. So, what uh, role uh, stays for automation testers after the tests are automated? This is my first question. And the second one is, as we are moving towards Agile, many organizations, they are now uh, they are integrating the developers, testers, business analysts all together. And few companies, as you've shown in Google, developers are doing the testing. So in that case, what remains the role of uh, tester, test lead, or test manager? In that yeah, case? so um, very briefly, second one, looking at quality coaches. So how can you coach product risk to other people? That's a huge part. But also remember it's context. You've got to remember context. Some places you absolutely need to have a tester. So that's not necessarily. And some contexts will always have test automation. Um, but to answer briefly, your other question is test automation. You've got to look at, look at where the pain points are in a, in a developer's life cycle. If the developer is doing the feature, what is stopping them from deploying that rapidly? Are the, is the automation, is the test automation taking too long? Are they, have they written too many tests? You know, are there old tests there that need to be, you know, I always like to think about having test automation has an end by date. If you've got tests in there that from five years ago, I suspect it's potentially a problem about those tests. So if you take out half of those tests which are low risk, perhaps the build speed will increase. And perhaps then, so it's at those sorts of things that you're adding value. Speak to your developers and find out what are their pain points. You know, how can you help them in that? It's so, yeah, you're becoming a kind of servant to, the, to helping them achieve what they, to get their, their code out. And there was a lady here who had a question. Is that okay? Just one more. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, so whatever we were discussing here is, I see very, very relevant to the IT industries where there is a differentiation between your development team, a tester team. But when you come to industries like the ones I'm working in, like the investment banking industries where you have your tester, somebody taking out time from your operations who is doing a part of the testing when the development is going on, the mindset is a little different. It, it, they don't have the background of you know, being doing testing for that long. They have the background of how the business runs, in fact. So there, what kind of a coaching style you, what kind of an environment can be created where they eventually can become embedded testers as we go 
go along? And that's the biggest challenge that you see in this industry. Yeah, and, that's you know. a great question. Um, I have worked in a semi-environment where the support, not necessarily, but the, the support and the te did the testing as well, and they were constantly in firefighting mode, and then they'd be asked to test, and there's a lot of conflict there between. Um, so I think, look, I have not actually had a huge amount of experience in that space, but what I would say is speaking to them first. Find out exactly the same thing. What are their pain points? Um, helping them do their job better. Because as soon as you help them achieve their job better, then things like helping them test better become easier to talk about. Um, so that's where I would start. So um, especially in those high rapid, you know, those rapid things. Um, but I think once you, once you get, you build up trust, that's a huge point I didn't go into, but building up trust with the people that you coach, you then can start having conversations about helping. helping how can I help your job by talking to the developers to help um, basically, say, automate the configuration so you don't make mistakes? How can I make it faster for you to deploy? So you, you, you're building up these um, ways of kind of, you're building up um, poker chips, as they say, you know? And then, you know, then if, if they have, by doing that, you've got a bit more time that will maybe you could then start talking about testing. But I don't know if I'd actually jump in with the testing from day one. There's too much going on. Yeah. yeah. Hope that helps. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, many thanks uh, for that. In the best interest of time, we'll have to uh, uh, conclude this presentation. Of course, we do have a panel discussion after this where uh, we'll be open to taking more questions. So once again, many thanks, uh, Anne-Marie, for that wonderful uh, first presentation. Uh, we would like to felicitate you uh, with a trophy. Oh, this is you. a token of appreciation that we give to all our speakers. Okay, thank so, you very much. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah. All right, so uh, going forward, I would like to call upon uh, Barish, who would be giving the next keynote for today. And as far as his topic is concerned, as you can see uh, on your agendas, uh, he would be covering uh, the keynote too. So let me start. Is it working? So, uh, my name is Barış, coming from Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Agile and what it brings uh, about users, about mobility, about test automation and so. Uh, so, first I would like to thank you guys uh, for, for this award and recognition. Uh, but I really do think that Indian people, you guys, do the greatest contribution to the area, so throughout the world, so that is correct. Yeah. Not for this, of course, I really think about it. You support whole world, and except from it, you are really friendly people, like uh, we are, uh, so very hospitable, uh, friendly, talkative, helpful, so thanks for uh, all your friendship. So uh, let me start. I am uh, a consultant, uh, basically, in this area, more than 15 years right now. I started with software development, so I am coming from the dark side, yeah? Then switch to consultation. I have been to several countries uh, across the world, uh, and now our firm, Keytalk, is doing basically uh, providing consultancy in software testing area, and which is uh, active in European region, so Belgium, Romania, Turkey, Azerbaijan, and so on, that region. So I bring my books with me. If you are interested, please, after my session, you are welcome. Thanks to the guys, they gave me a table there, so for Keytalk, there's a Keytalk table there, you can come and take a copy. But okay, is, is, I don't have that much books with me. So Amazon is also selling my books to me. So let's see. World is agile, we know it. And let me give you some facts. 90% of data today is produced within the last two years, which is uh, coming from several research. And line of code, doubling every two years. So we are crazily 
developing uh, software. And the things is coming to my mind is, okay, if lines of code are doubling every two years, what will happen to testers? And many people think that, okay, so many universities come up, there are many frameworks right now are used, so uh, development technologies are improving day by day. We are using so many tools in this area, so uh, one day in the future, uh, shall we have uh, high quality products? It means that, okay, testers, will they lose their jobs? No, because another fact is, defects per line of code remains the same for the last 10 years. So it means that our job is safe. Sometimes, you know, because we, I'm in the field of testing, we uh, unfortunately like bugs, yeah? We love them. So as testers, so imagine a world without bugs. So we will be, uh, uh, we will not be earning any money. So we like them. Uh, unfortunately, and there will be 20 billion connected devices. You know, with this uh, IoT stuff and the connected devices, every company is producing, uh, they call it smart devices. I don't think that they are that smart, but okay. Uh, they try to do uh, implementations on that area, and maybe you follow that group, Standish group. Uh, they do research like Gartner and Forrester, something like that, and they name it Chaos Report. And it says that IT projects are problematic and uh, one third cancelled, over half delivered over budget, uh, almost two thirds of it considered unsuccessful, even they go live, and 90, uh, around 90% 90 is delivered late. I think this is the case in your uh, companies or sectors as well. And Agile. Uh, almost currently every company is looking at it. So uh, we want to be Agile. Is it a really methodology like Waterfall or V-Model? Uh, I don't think that it's really a methodology. It's uh, rather than a methodology, it's a thinking from my perspective. Let me explain to you. There are so many myths in this area, so many misperceptions, misconceptions. Tell me, this is the first one. Agile is new. So people are looking at it like, okay, it's a rocket science. So it's very new, but it's not that new. It comes from Tom Gilb's evolution method from 1976. He says in the book that, okay, you need to divide and conquer. So you need to split the whole thing into uh, smaller portions and develop them. So this is not a very new stuff. But uh, the manifesto, Agile manifesto, is developed in 2001, maybe you know, in, in, in the States. Okay, the other thing is Agile is better than waterfall. If you ask me, I would say it depends. It depends on what context you have. For example, if your users are conscious, if your users are aware of the systems, if your requirements are very clear, if your project life cycle is not that long, something like a couple of weeks, you can use it. So if you use waterfall, don't commit a suicide, yeah? So you can still continue using it. If you are making use of it, why not? And the other thing is, it's another myth that, okay, people think that Agile is Scrum. Just we will have people with eight, uh, eight people in a team, and we will not have any titles in the team, so we will collaborate. We will have two weeks release cycles. We call it sprints, but this is not the case. There are many methods under Agile Manifesto, more than 50 methods actually. So Scrum is just only one. And yeah, we'll, it's like a pill. Yeah? When we do the transition to Agile, we will be perfect, in a perfect shape. No, I cannot say that. Many companies are struggling, by the way, when they do the transition. They fail because 
they just do it for doing it, yeah? Okay, everyone is doing it, why not we would do it? So if you don't need it, okay, let's think about it. And I don't like those best practices, yeah? Companies like they read a book and come to their organization and say that, okay, guys, we will drop these cubicles. We will have a round table. Okay, you don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to invest that much, yeah? Physical hardware. So people should look face to face. Okay, maybe we can do it side by side. Why not? <laughs> and with Agile, there are many funny things as well. They, they have teams and they name the teams, yeah? You are uh, hobbits. So you are Jedi's. You are the dark side. And people, especially in my country, it's like, okay, I'm in the field more than 30 years, so I'm a very senior guy, and now I become a hobbit, yeah? <laughs> Do I really need it? If you ask me, you don't really need those things. Yeah, just naming a group to say people that to show that we are doing agile. For me, it's not that necessary. Also, many people think that we will not have any documents, especially the developers. They hate documents and they promote this idea. When they do the transition, they are the uh, dark side in the team generally and they, they promote those. Okay, don't report the bugs, don't document anything. So, Agile doesn't say that, by the way. So it doesn't say that you will not have any, any kind of documentation. We will talk about it. So report the bugs. No segregation of duties. So we will only have team members. So this is our first team, Hobbits, and you are members. And they say that we, are, we will have people capable of doing everything. So all in one, guys can do testing, analysis, design, coding, everything. I'm sorry, guys. There are no people like this in the world, yeah? <laughs> okay, when I remember myself, I was, a, I was a developer, as I've told you, and I had, I had the skills of testing, but I hated it, yeah? When I was coding, and when they asked me to do unit testing, I said, okay, these guys, they are earning money, so just give the code to those. They will find you the bugs. This is my idea. This was my idea. So when I was coding, this is crazy. So you can have, you can segregate the duties. And it is, I will appreciate it if you do it. Because otherwise, if you have only one guy in the group, quality is in the second priority, generally. Because team is committed to delivering a product, but what about the quality? If you are focusing on time all the time, you lose concentration on quality, yeah? Time is a different driver, so...